بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آور فورٹینتھ لیکچر ٹو ڈے اینڈ ایز یوزل آئی وڈ لائک ٹو گیو یو دا سمری آف دا پریویس لیکچر سو دیٹ اٹ از ایز اٹ از لنکڈ ود دا ٹو ڈے لیکچر اینڈ وی ول کنٹینیو دس ڈسکشن وٹ وی ہیو کورڈ سم آف دا پروپورشن پریویسلی سو آئی وڈ لائک ٹو گیو دا سمری دیٹ ریگریشن تھرو دا اوریجن آئی ایم thinking now you are very good and very strong in regression because it is just will be you can say over emphasized as i say that the regression is the fundamental tool in your analysis so you know its importance my purpose is to give you that there are uh, two major kinds of regression that one is regression with the intercept and the other is regression through the origin we talked about in previous many lecture about the regression that ha- is with the intercept concept what but in the previous lecture we talked about the regression that has uh, that has no intercept in other words it is simply the regression through the origin so it is uh, very interesting but when we run the regression through the origin some of the consideration appears that cannot be avoided or you cannot s- uh, say that they sh- uh, can be ignored what are those uh, consequences or you can say the consideration simply when the regression is through the origin our measure of goodness of it becomes a bit different from the previous measure the what is the different in this situation we will call it the ra r square and in the our previous i would like the previous discussion the uh, i would like to say the previous discussion of conventional or you can say the traditional so when we will compare it with the traditional r square they are not on the same footings because now the formulas are change and what we want that we compare only both things that have the same footings so we have to go for this formula the other thing when the regression through the origin is that we should avoid this situation and regression through the origin because although really it is used and it is when it is used it is only used when you think that you have a very strong solid and weightage uh, very uh, weightage uh, heavy weight behind using this uh, the- theory tells you and you run the regression through the origin then we started uh, discussing about the scale and unit in everyday life you are looking that there are many scale and units for uh, example i would like to give only the same uh, the previous example that if two person are there and they want to run the relationship between the Uh, t- taxes and the GDP now in Texas Pakistan they are also data available that the taxes are in million rupees GDP is also available in the million rupees uh, it the data for the both variable is also available in the uh, billion ta- uh, billion you can say the value so what is I uh, up to you now if you the you a uh, per two person run one on in taking the billion the other taking the million the practical entity of the issue or you can say the sense of the issue remain the same but we have to go for some interpretation change and some of we will see we were looking at the standard errors and something there may, may be change we call these constant values that are the scale and unit the w's and now we will continue our discussion for of this scale and units special feature of scaling and units the first feature of this scales and unit is if w1 is equal to w2 now i think you have you know that that what is w1 and w2 these are the constant factor as it is the start of the lecture i would like to give you that what is w1 we suppose that we generate a new variable y star and it is equal to w1 that is a constant multiplied by y and similarly we say that we generate a variable x star and it is equal to w2 the other constant and that is the xi values this is the yi this is the xi because we will multiply this factor with all the value with each and every value so what is this the first very interesting feature of this that if w1 is equal to w2 this situation that both your multiplying factor are the same then what happens that the slope coefficient now that are the beta 2 and the standard error remain the same two things do not change 
which is the situation when w1 is equal to w2 your scaling factor are similar identical what happens to your slope coefficient and the st his standard error remain unaffected going from when definitely when you will multiply this the, the yi will become y star and the xi will become xi star i would like to give it from the example look at here so look at the, this the data this is the dependent variable our gdpi investment and this is the independent variable that is the gdp so if you look at this i have written here that both are gdp or gdpi are in billion both values are in billion so what we get and look at the values of this this will help you this is the value of beta 1 hat this is beta 2 hat this is the standard error of beta 1 and this is the standard error of beta 2 hat and this is the residual sum uh, this is the explained sum of square yeah, or you can say this is measure of goodness look at this we say that we multiply both x and y values here is x y and this is x first it was billion it both were in billion this was also in billion now we want to in make in them million so we mul will multiply both these terms by 1000 when we will multiply it our a billion with 1000 they will become million so what we did we multiplied each and every value look at this how it is difficult that if you do not know, uh, know these of the relationship for example if you have the data from 1960 to 2012 and you have 52 observations and when you will have to uh, multiply each and every verse, uh, value of x as well as y with 1000 you will be confused and there will be huge data before you so what you do you need not to worry about this you should uh, understand the link what is happening here now you multiply this and you estimated the re regression again that is called this one and i would like that this is beta 1 star this is beta 2 star here and this is now star this is also star look at the our claim that if we, w1 is equal to w2 there is no change in the slope coefficient and the standard error go to your slope coefficient and standard error our slope coefficient was here 0 0.3016 and you can see that it is again 0 0.3016 there is no change even you went from billion to million there was no change in your slope coefficient and look at the standard error this is the standard error and you can compare it with this standard error and there is no difference so what was our first claim we will make our uh, second claim after clearing this our this uh, claim what was our statement we said that if the two multiplying factor that are the w's are identical then there will be no change in the slope slope coefficient as well as its standard error so we are going to the what is the second claim in the same situation this thing is still maintained that if this is again happen the intercept that is now beta 1 hat and its standard error are both multiplied by w1 now if i say it is w1 or I can say W2 because W1 is equal to W2. This is very interesting. What is this uh, claim saying? What is a beautiful or you can say a surprising and interesting and important uh, property or you can say the feature of the uh, this uh, scaling and unit is that. Now the intercept. Now we will immediately go to the intercept and what here our claim is saying that the intercept and standard error are both multiplied by W1 now our w1 and w2 are 1000 because we multiplied billion into million uh, 1000 and then they came the uh, million so what we are doing here look at this now come here here the standard error was 257.58 standard error of beta 1 hat intercept 
so this was 257.58 and look at this the figure is almost the same but it has been multiplied multiplied by 1000 because the uh, point or you can say the decimal has jumped three digits towards the right side it means there is multiplication of 1000 so the first claim is partially true and we are going towards the other and we will see the value of beta 1 hat this was an intercept uh, this was the standard error and look at this these values are almost same 1 1026498 but you can see that there is some difference that this decimal that was here uh, that was at this point now it has shifted to this one and now decimal is here so what happened that when you your w1 was equal to w2 your scaling factor were identical what happened your slope coefficient and its standard error remain the same no change came in your uh, these slope and its standard error but what happened to, the, uh, to the, your uh, intercept value and the standard error of intercept they both were multiplied their values were multiplied by 1000 so if me it mean if someone asked me that only all the values are multiplied by 1000 I will immediately able to tell you uh, that what is the situation for example if someone tells me that text is is equal to beta 1 uh, beta 1 plus beta 2 GDP and he give me the uh, estimate that taxes are equal to 70 plus uh, 0 0.3 GDP and he gave me the standard error he gave that the standard error is 3.50 and he gave that here the standard error is 0 0.765 these are supposed values now someone told me but uh, leaving the it becomes billion or trillion someone told me that all the values are w1 was equal to 100 and w2 was equal to also 100 so this means w1 was equal to w2 two identical values so what it said the all the values if i go to the previous example it means you will have to multiply 52 values of this uh, x1 with 100 and 52 values of and you will run the uh, uh, other regression but if uh, he or she tell me that this is the situation i can immediately bra bring that that i know that there will be no change tax will be equal to now there will be no change in the slope coefficient this will be 0 0.3 gdp and this will be 0 0.65 because our claim if you go to the first one look at your claim this is your first claim and you can say this is our first claim so what this means the second is now look at this i did not calculate the huge calculation but i immediately on my previous and the concrete knowledge i said now i am coming here that here i know there will be change in the intercept and the uh, standard error of the intercept what the change could be similarly the uh, these are uh, 100 this will be uh, multiplied by 100 it will become 7000 and standard error will immediately come 350.00 these both values 70 has been multiplied by 100 and 350 has been also multiplied by 100 so the first and the second claims are true for us I would like to immediately go this claim and I have to cover the further one the first is that if w1 is equal to w2 your scaling factor are similar then need not to go to run the regression again immediately see that there will be no change in your uh, the uh, slope coefficient and the this the standard error but on the other side your intercept value will be multiplied by the scaling factor now need not worry about what is w1 and w2 because they are identical and in the same way your inter uh, standard error of intercept will also be multiplied by your scaling factor what is the third one if x scale is not changed look at this x scale is not changed we will go to our original that was in billion if x scale is not changed what this means that w2 is equal to 1 anything multiplied by 1 will remain the same 
एंड वाई स्केल इज चेंज बाई डब्ल्यू एंड वाई स्केल इज चेंज बाई द फैक्टर डब्ल्यू वन एक्स डब्ल्यू टू इज नॉट चेंज एक्स वन द स्लोप एज वेल एज लुक एट दिस द स्लोप एज वेल एज द इंटरसेप्ट कोफिशेंट एंड देयर रेस्पेक्टिव स्टैंडर्ड एरर्स आर आर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द सेम डब्ल्यू वन फैक्टर सो वट इज द डब्ल्यू वन वट इज द सिचुएशन नाउ नाउ यू आर होल्डिंग वन थिंग कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज द डब्ल्यू टू दैट यू डू नॉट मल्टीप्लाई द एक्स वैल्यूज विद एनी थिंग सो वट दिस रिजल्ट ब्रिंग दैट द स्लोप एज वेल एज द इंटरसेप्ट कोफिशेंट एंड देयर रेस्पेक्टिव स्टैंडर्ड एर आर ऑल मल्टीप्लाइड बाई द सेम फैक्टर डब्ल्यू वन आई सपोज दैट डब्ल्यू वन इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड लुक एट हेयर लुक एट दिस I will suppose later at uh, 100. Look at this. This was this model will remain our original model. This is original. It is in billion. Now what happened? GDP in billion of dollars and GDP in million dollars. GDP has been multiplied. That is the scaling factor is now you can say that. Look at this. You are multiplying and. the y scale is changed by the factor w1 y is look at this again at this now it is also in million this is both the term millions you have done this that you have divided these term by 1000 then it has become uh, billion and here w1 is equal to 1000 and it is equal to 1 over 1000 you have divided this otherwise it is w1 and gdp is in million gdp remains the same so look at this what happening here compare it with this look at your claim the slope as well as the intercept coefficient and their respective standard error are all multiplied by the w1 factor yes the claim is that if we hold one and w2 constant and we multiply it by only y values by w1 look at it now you will have to see carefully i have written overwriting there look at here gdp we just this was in million now look at this this was in million we converted it to billion it means we divided it by 1000 and our w1 is equal to now 1 over 1000 so what happened to this look at this everything is changing now it was 1026 now i am uh, looking at the values of the intercept look at the values of the intercept from this value that is now this one this has been divided by 1000 and similarly if you look at the standard error this was the standard error and the decimal have jumped three point uh, three digits to left and it is here now look at this this has this was 0.30316 and it has been divided by 1000 and this has also been divided by 1000 so it means if you only multiply the dependent variable that is your w2 and you keep your independent variable x everything is changed what is changed there will be the uh, uh, the intercept value the, the its uh, standard error the co uh, the slope coefficient and its standard error all will be multiplied by your w1 that is your multiplication uh, constant with the w1 now i am going towards the last claim that was the fourth one finally if the y scale dream now you reverse the situation now you keep the y values constant it means you are now supposing that w1 is equal to 1 and but the x scale now you are multiplying the x values changed by w2 what will happen the slope coefficient and its standard error are multiplied by the factor 1 over w2 these will be if it is equal to w2 now these will be multiplied not by the w2 but it is 1 over w2 but the intercept and its standard error remain ineffective it is good one thing is i uh, will not change so coming to here now what you did here you kept look at this you this is your now compare this one 
with this one. So what is this? This was in million. You kept the GDP in million of dollars, and you it was GDP was in also million, but you did it in GDP. Now it is in billion dollars. So what is the situation? So GDP is equal to now. Look at this. We uh, we thought that there will be no change up to here. Intercept and its standard error will not change. But look at this. This one. What is has been happened? That when you came from this million to billion, what you did? You divide the all the values by one thousand. When there were million, you divide each the value. So what this means? Your W two was one thousand now. So what happened? Look at your this this slope coefficients. It has what was your this slope coefficient here? Now it has been multiplied by this. Look at this three digits. It has gone towards this. So your W two one was one over one thousand. W because you divided each the value by one over uh, by one thousand. So I would like to write at at W two is equal to one over two thousand. Look at here from now compare this value with this value. Now if you see that the decimal has gone three points to this time because the all the values now W two uh, will be multiplied by one thousand. Because if you go, if you take one over W two, the all the values will definitely be multiplied by one thousand. So look at this. The both have proved here that the situation has changed. So there are four fundamental, or you can say, the interesting properties of the this scale and unit. The and I think you have got the idea. The idea is simple. That in two cases. The slope coefficient, uh, uh, in one case the slope coefficient never change, in the other case the intercept coefficient never changes. The other situation is that in the second situation intercept changes, the other uh, the slope remain the same, and in one th there is also one case that in both the cases every everything is changed. So what is this? The R square values. This is very interesting. Look at this R square. This four R square, but there is not a single unit change in the R square. What is this? It is invariant to changes in the unit of measurement, as it is a pure and dimensionless number. It has no dimension, so it keeps on. It remains constant, whatever we are scaling and doing this kind of thing. and this was the features of the scale and units a word about interpretation as i said that the scale and unit uh, units practically put no question marks on the uh, you can say the relationship between the variable but it is the researcher who should keep in mind that how he interprets this situation in his words since the slope coefficient beta 2 is simply look at this slope coefficient beta is the change and it is measured how it is measured unit change in dependent variable units of the explanatory variable and you know beta 2 has it is equal to delta y over delta x so it is a ratio between this so what happens the interpretation of the slope coefficient this one when it is with the gdp what is that changes by a unit which is 1 billion dollars gdp on average changes this one so i would like to explain that what is this so i would like to write it rather than here that gdp gdp i is equal to now for example this is 2050 plus 0 0.3016 gdpi now what this saying is G, if gdpi changes by one unit on average there is 0.3016 unit change in gdpi listen again 
and listen carefully because in multiple regression model we will be explaining many of the effect of the independent variable this what is this this is the situation now whatever the situation it is if in billion it is million now we have called it a unit we have been tricky we called it a unit now we change the regression and we say that we bring it to in this was the million we brought into billion now this situation will i will keep this in constant and deliberately for simplicity now gdpi is equal to 2050 and when you know when you will be scaling this i would not to explain it will become 0.000 302 GDP now you look that the relation is the similar between GDP and the GDPI but now how you will have to explain this that now if there is one unit change in the GDP that is here now on average there is 0.000302 unit change in the dependent variable that is the GDPI the two result of course identical in effect this is very interesting because the practicality the implication you can say the its real meaning its implicit meaning its reality remain the same because the scaling and unit do not change the nature of the study it just is a, you can say it is just a manipulating manipulation of the data and you will have to careful about this GDP on GDP, they are simply expressed in different units of measurement. Nothing changes, but the units changes. Regression on standardized variable. This is a further, a further a refinement on the regression of uh, regression through the origin. What is the standardized variable? I would like to draw your attention to our Pakistan GDP. If you look at this the GDP gross domestic product. it comes from number of factors for example if it comes from agriculture i suppose it agriculture has a contribution in our this uh, gdp and i say this comes in tons and there is contribution of you can say milk i suppose that it uh, it comes in liters we measure it it's in liter there is gas it has effect in our gdp and i say this is in cubic feet and now you can say the other is this is the petrol and this is also in liter there are many other units if i take the weight it will become kg so what is this this is interesting because when gdp is coming but you never listen that we said that our gdp is in uh, tons in uh, you can say the liters or millimeters and whatsoever the situation what is the reason it because we standardize all of the things into rupee we bring from ourselves a new measure a standardized measure that is uh, that is called the rupee so what does this mean we have standardized all the variables because the different unit will make some of the ambiguity into our regression if there is the uh, only there is the multiplication but if the unit is changed in such a way that one is in liter the other is in kg the other is in height centimeters so this is a bit uh, you can say the uh, the complicated or you can say the complex to avoid this we use the standardized variable and first we convert all of the variables into standard variable then it is it is easy because all the data comes into uniformity and then we run the regression sim in the like the previous discussion we will see that a bit interpretation of the variable changes the unit in which the regression and regressor for example is if your regressor is for example here crop yield and i say it is a function of weather and i think this is the fertilizer look at this crop yield you will measure in for example tons weather i say you will measure as temperature and you will this will number of packets now this all the three variable have 
are different in unit. So if this is the situation, then the interpretation of the regression coefficients becomes changed. Standard variables, as I said, avoid this situation because when there is uh, a, a discon uh, you can say disconnectivity or you can say there is not harm uh, harmonity harmonization in the variables then the problem arises and the, uh, the we are lucky that we have the standardized variable now i would like to give the definition of the standard variable we can standardize each and every variable the formula for all the variable will remain same we will just talk about two and we will see that how this standardization becomes and what are then we in the next slide we will be looking at that what are its uh, the benefit and the properties so what is this the definition of the variable is a variable is said to be the standardized variable if we subtract the mean value, mean value of the variable from individual value, I would like to write it here. This is the individual value. For example, we are standardizing V, Y. What is the first step? Subtract mean from each value. This is YI and subtract it uh, Y bar from this. So subtract the mean value of the variable from individual values and divide the difference. Now this is the difference and divide it the standard deviation of the y value. So this will become now if it now it is standardized and I would like to mention it by star. So this is the definition of the standard variable. A variable becomes standardized when we subtract the mean value from its uh, each value individual value and divide the difference between the standard uh, by the standard deviation this was example for the uh, y star i can give the example for x x is a variable we want to standardize first we will subtract xi individual value minus x bar and we will be dividing it by standard deviation of the x not now by the y by the standard deviation of the x same variable you can give another example i need now to explain this here at this and now the x will be called the x star now as the variable becomes standardized as a notation it is not a rule of thumb that every time we are showing it by the star but most of the time and the simplicity we you uh, we show it by the star properties and interpretation of standardized variable standardized variable are, are very beneficial but they, we may say that there are maybe some of its drawback first we are looking at its properties the first property is that the mean of a standardized variable is always equal to zero again listen that is a very very interesting and simple property that the mean of a standardized variable is always equal to zero we show this you know that this is the standardized variable that we are going to prove that the mean of a standardized variable standardized variable is always is always equal to zero so look at this I write the standardized variable suppose that I have a y standardized variable so what is this y star this is standardized variable and immediately you know it is equal to y i minus y bar and you will be dividing it by the standard deviation of y so what I do I uh, take uh, the summation on both sides this is summation of y star and this is summation of y i minus y bar and it is divided by s y so I in a, a other step I can bring s y out of the summation because its value is known on, and it is now constant summation y star is equal to now 1 over standard deviation of y into summation y i minus y bar 
so if i do add i want to take the mean i will like this summation by n dividing both side by n so this will become summation y star over n and this will become y uh, 1 over s y summation y i over y bar over n so what is this this is a uh, the summation of uh, all the values divided by n it becomes st uh, the bar so it will become y star bar and you know the sum of deviation from mean is always equal to 0 so this will it is by assumption not by assumption it is always equal to 0 any you take any of the series and you subtract its mean from each value and you sum up its uh, sum will be equal to 0 so what is this this will become 1 over standard error y and it will become 0 over n and I think you have got the idea that this will become 0 so first property of this mean uh, the standardized variable variable is that the mean of a standardized variable is always equal to 0 now the go to the other property standardized standard deviation or variance or variance is 1 why because this is the variance if this is the variance and it is equal to 1 then this is the standard deviation that is the only square root of this it is also equal to 1 so we call it that the standard deviation or its variance is equal to 1 there is no difference in explaining this so I would like to again explain you should remember this derivation very simple derivation how uh, we what we did we are talking about that the what are the properties of the standardized variable the first and fundamental property is that the mean of a standardized variable is always equal to zero and on the other side now I, uh, we are going to prove that the variance of all the standardized variable or any standardized variable is always equal to one you can say that this is the standardization so i would like again so here we are say, we will write that the standard deviation or variance of a standardized variable now as we mean standardized variable is equal to 1 so what is this if this is standard deviation of y s y and it is equal to uh, there is y star y star this is the standard uh, dice variable y i minus y bar over s y so what we say that we take the uh, we convert both side into variance into variance converting or you can say take uh, converting both sides into variance variance what this will become this will become simply s square y and you know the formula for this that what is the formula for variance i would like here the formula for variance is s square y is equal to summation y minus y bar square over n minus 1 so what we did we uh, writing a instead of summation y i minus y i minus y bar square we just wrote that this is the variance come to this side the upper side will definitely we want to convert into variance this will become summation y i minus y bar over n minus 1 and this is square so we have converted the numerator into this uh, variance and it is you can say it is divided by the very the variance of the standard dev uh, deviation is simply we I did not write in the square form I just write it that this is the variance now so if I can write it can be further simplified that the s square y can be written as summation 
1 over n minus 1 and it is multiplied by s square y and it is summation y i minus y bar square. Now what I am doing, I am on the right side, I am multiplying nominator as well as the denominator by n minus 1. You will be writing this that uh, on the right hand side we multiplied nominator as well, uh, nominator as, well as the uh, denominator by n minus 1 and there will be no difference if we uh, divide uh, uh, multiply and divide anything by 5 by 5 for example it is x there will be no difference it is just a trick so what is this it will become the on the uh, above side it will become n minus 1 when we multiply the, this and when we divide this also this will become summation y i minus y bar square over n minus 1 and if you see that here is also s square y that is the variance now so what will this this will become s square y will equal to if you see that this is uh, here is also n minus 1 if you see the formula n minus 1 is here this is new n minus 1 for uh, with which we have divided and this is also n min minus 1 we have multiplied this so what will this I can write it this will become this will cancel out with this one and you know this whole term is also variance so it is s square y divided by s square y that is variance over variance is equal to 1 so we have proved the other uh, property that the variance of any standardized variable I am using the word the standardized variable the variance of any of the standardized variable is always equal to 1 and its mean is always equal to 0 now in regression the in regression analysis the standardized variable are called the beta coefficient it these have special names and as we listen the name of beta coefficients we should immediately click that we are talking about the standardized variable interpretation of beta coefficient definitely now there is a change every variable has been standardized regression has been run and definitely when we have converted all the variable into some standard variable its interpretation has changed what is the now if the independent variable I would like to write it some uh, supply and demand equation I say that the quantity demand is equal to 7 minus 0 0.5 P now I say that the P and Q D have been standardized these are variable this is just this position just to teach you just to show you that this is the situation now it will not be if for example for the moment assume that this is the simple model there is no standardization so what will be uh, here this so this will uh, this means that if now I am not talking about the standardized variables what this means that if there is one rupee increase one unit increase in price on average there is 0 0.5 rupee decrease in the quantity demand now immediately I reverse the situation I say that now these are the standardized variable so how you would like to say this now the if the independent variable changes by one standard deviation first we used to say one unit now we will say the if the independent variable changes by one standard deviation that what will happen the dependent variable changes by beta 2 now beta 2 star is here is so what we will be saying now I am supposing that this is the standardized vari uh, equation it has been run on the standardized variable and I can say that this is star this is star this is beta 1 star beta 1 hat star and this is beta 2 hat star now I am going to and this is the link between the quantity demanded and the price so what is the link I am saying now if the price changes by one standard deviation what will happen the quantity demanded on average will change by one standard deviation 
by 0.5 standard deviation on average by 0.5 standard deviation unlike the tra traditional model the effect is measured not in the original unit of x and y but in standardized unit the same story i just explained because in the traditional or the conventional model we use uh, when we interpret we use the uh, the scale that in which the variable are x and y but when there uh, we have standardized this variable we ignore the in which the x was and in which the y was measured the unit the original unit go out of the scene the new scenario emerge and the scenario is very interesting and what this says now you will be saying that if there is one standard error change in the independent variable that is in our case is the price on average the dependent variable that is the quantity demanded will be changed by 0.5 standard deviation advantages of standardized variable definitely if we have talked about this we want to know about this that what are the advantages of the standard deviation uh, standardized variable so what this is very interesting it is more useful in the multiple regression model although i am uh, uh, not willing to give you uh, the idea right here but let me just write here that what is this that y is now in the shape y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 now look at the, uh, there are many variables i have just taken here that as independent variable three variable but there can be 300 variable so when there is multiple regression then the unit of different variable will be definitely different and you will have to standardize this so this standardization technique that is the standardization of the variable this is very useful particularly in the case of the multiple regression uh, model i am not saying that it is not useful in uh, the bivariate model it is too uh, useful in this model but most of the time because there are two variable and most of the time the situation is in such a kind that the uh, is such the case that the variable both the variable are in the same uh, scale by standardizing all regressors independent variable we put them on equal basis and therefore can be can compare them directly this is very interesting what is this that when there are i said that there are 300 variable that are the independent variable and you know we want to see the effect of each individual independent variable on the dependent variable so what we will be doing when there are 300 variables so we want to bring them on one stage that we will standardize this and as we will standardize we can directly compare them this is so simple that when they are the standard the standard is the same we can directly compare them how we can uh, directly compare them for example if the coefficient of standardized regressor, regressor is larger look at the previous example this is y and it is equal to beta 2 plus bit this is beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x 3 so i replace it that i say that the beta 2 is 0 0.5 and beta this is 3 this is 4 beta 2 this is also 3 and this is 4 just a, a miss calculation here so if it is this 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.8 now beta 3 is 0 0.8 beta 2 is equal to 0 point now the we have run the regression on the standardized variable now these are directly comparable and how these are comparable you can see the magnitude and the size of the beta 3 is greater than beta 2 so what we will be saying that the beta 3 has a larger effect on the dependent variable as compared to beta 2 in other words we can use the beta coefficients as a measure of a relative strength of the various regressor we have seen the relative uh, uh, relative strength of the variable here 
what we said that the beta 2 is now stronger if you do not standardize I would like to write if I get the space here if look at this I say I have not standardized these two variable this is 3 plus 0 0.4 x1 plus 0 0.6 x2 these are not standardized x2 is in other unit x1 is uh, in other unit so what this in 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 are not directly comparable because they both are in different uh, different you can say the scale but the uh, advantage of this scale is the standardization of the variable is that they immediately enabled us that we immediately see their relative uh, relative strength so look at this if now I immediately suppose that now these are in the standardized form so what will happen this will the situation and this is 0 0.6 now you can say see immediately that the effect of the beta 3 that is here 0 0.6 or you can say the effect of x2 is greater than x2 effect is greater than xy because the magnitude the size of the standardized variable uh, the coefficient of the standardized variable is now greater so this is very easy and when you have different kinds of variable that are in different scales you should uh, standardize and run the regression more about regression on standardized variable regression uh, you, we are talking about that there is some interesting relationship between the standardized variable and the other uh, coefficients for example between the beta coefficient beta coefficients are the simple coefficients and the uh, and the beta coefficients here that are the standardized so what is this this is the formula and as i said previously you should be able to uh, uh, show this formula in this uh, if I say that the beta 2 hat should is equal to beta 2 hat star and now it will be sy over sx simple mathematically just you know how to bring one of the term to the equ uh, to the other side of the equation so I would like to uh, give an example suppose we have the values we know that you from simple model you did not standardize the model you did not standardize your variable so beta 2 here for example it is 0 0.6 most of the time you are thinking that I am taking a very small value of and less value of uh, beta 2 at and this is most of the time less than 1 there is a justification be uh, behind this that most of the time as the beta 2 is the slope coefficient and the slope is most of the time less than 1 so if I know that the standard error uh, that, that the standard deviation of x is equal to 4 and the standard deviation is equal to 2 so if I want to see that the what is the value of beta 2 hat immediately I can find from here just replace that beta 2 hat star that is now the standardized coefficient it is equal to beta 2 hat here is 0 0.6 and it is multiplied by sx is equal to 4 and sy is equal to 2 and it will become 0 0.6 multiplied by 2 and it is equal to you can say 1.2 so this is the value of the standardized coefficient you did not st first standardize all the variables you did not run the regression but there is a relationship between the simple uh, beta coefficients and the standardized coefficient I would like to give another example that if we are given the values of the beta uh, the standardized variable then how we can get the value of the that is the you can say the simple beta so this is if rather than this uh, this thing is sim uh, same someone tell me that the standardized coefficient beta 2 star hat is equal to 0 0.4 and I am asked to find the value of beta 2 at simple uh, beta coefficient without the standardization of the variable so I will immediately find now I will converge towards this formula uh, I will be getting help from this formula so this is now beta 2 hat will become beta 2 hat uh, a star hat 
here I have supposed this value and this is 0 0.4 and multiply SY now SY will first this is 2 and now this is 4 so what is this this is 0 0.4 multiplied by 1 by 2 what is this 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.5 so this is 0 0.2 so this is now the value of the true or you can say the simple not the true but the simple coefficient so this is the relationship between this it uh, this relationship the simple relationship help us in uh, in saving our lot of efforts and time if we are not aware of this we will have to go back again we have to standardize the variable and uh, we have to then run the regression again here it is simple but in the multiple uh, pulse regression equation this uh, formula again holds and then we save even more time when we have to do many of the uh, we have to run after the many of the independent variable now I would like to start a, another discussion that the functional forms of the regression models. What is the functional forms of the regression model? You know we are interested in the models that are linear in the pari parameters but there can be different times that the model remain linear in the parameter but it may assume different uh, functional form. So no functional form is preferable to other, other but as you will be using this you will aware of this that their interpretation of the coefficient becomes a bit change. So what is this? It will may take different form within the change in the form of interpretation. As your form of the model will change although you will maintain the assumption that there the model is uh, linear in the parameter for example the first is log linear model the other name for is this double log model log model all this is called log 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 model the other is semi log model the next one is reciprocal and the fourth one is the logarithmic reciprocal model so we were discussing about the choice of functional form functional form chance uh, uh, choice is uh, very important because one of our uh, assumption of the uh, classical linear regression model was that the model is correctly specified so if your model is not you have chosen the wrong functional form you have uh, you have you can say the uh, you have not fulfilled one of the assumption of the classical linear regression model is easy in two variables this is very easy the selection of model is very easy in two variable case how this is look at this this is x this is y if I see that such kind I, I will plot the values if I see that if this is the situation I think before me I think you have just guessed that this is a linear model and if you see that I have such kind of situation this is X this is Y and this kind of such situation you will be thinking that this is not the linear model the choice becomes much harder when we consider the multiple regression uh, analysis I am avoiding and uh, uh, just to just explain the multiple regression model because we have a long more than five or six lecture on the multiple regression model but I at this time it is just uh, it is enough for you that you come to know that this choice between the uh, functional form which functional form you would like to use it becomes bit complicated when the regression is multiple great deal and skill experience required this is very important because most of the time people will be objecting your model and if you are unable to uh, justify that why you uh, did not use this kind of model uh, you, why you use this kind of model 
you will have to face the music at that time and you there will be no option then to go back and rerun the analysis redo the analysis so avoiding this think before this do not ju jump immediately blindly think that whether which kind of model is more suitable to your uh, uh, analysis or your data Le at later stage you will come to know that although the interpretation will change but it is easy to handle but the first the functional form is necessary and it requires a lot of skills and experience and that comes on the basis of practice and you can say that on the basis of your previous knowledge find slope and elasticity the other thing is that find slope and elasticity of different model and compare them uh, compare them and here the here are some of the formula i am not going to explain the formula i will explain it later Sub, uh, some gui guidelines as in the previous slide i said that it requires a great expertise and skill to choose which model log linear model semi log model or you can say the reciprocal order what uh, uh, model it depends on your skill your expertise your you can say you are how much you are veteran in this field how you are uh, you even you should go far to the art, uh, uh, artist level the first is that definitely although there is totally skill and expertise but we have some clues we can get light from these clues there is tunnel and some of the lights will be uh, guiding us to uh, at, to the end of the tunnel the first thing in this case is that the underlying underlying theory may suggest a particular function if you know the theory the theory may suggest do uh, suggest you that which kind of the function is that there are many theories that immediately come that whether the reciprocal relationship whether there is a linear uh, log linear relationship or whether there is a simple relationship when we will be talking about one by one in detail we will be discussing this so what is this you should be crystal clear you should know the background of the theory it will help you to know that which model is uh, suitable for your study the coefficient of the model chosen should satisfy prior expectation you choose the model you run the regression you came up with the coefficients that were the beta uh, two, one hat and beta two hat that were the estimates now whatever the model was the first situation should be that your slope coefficient should be according to the theory for example if i run the regression uh, of uh, prices and the quantity demanded linear log linear but i come with that the price has a positive sign it will immediately give me a shock if i know the theory so i would would have to go back and see that there is a negative relationship between the prices and quantity demanded why this is showing that there is a positive relationship relationship is negative but your slope coefficient is showing that there is a positive relationship for example i have just explained this that then demand analysis the slope coefficient should be negative sometime more than model may fit your data this happens that sometime for example if you run the simple model or i can say the double log model or you run the sim, uh, semi log model both model fit your uh, data then again you are further trapped you are uh, you can say that now you are in a dilemma that how which model to have in the beginning you were dilemma it was a general dilemma that is faced by any of the researcher but now you are in a specific dilemma and what is the dilemma that you have the both model are very good uh, measures of showing measures of goodness of fit and you are in a fix that with which you which model to choose in both coefficient and in both cases the coefficients are significant you run the regression you you uh, use two model and in every case the your uh, coefficient are significant this is our they are according to the theory now they are co the coefficients are significant significant mean they have uh, you have rejected the null hypothesis and now they have significant effect on the dependent variable two things match one is that the your your model was different 
the uh, result came according to the theory and the other one step further came that the model was uh, all the your coefficient were signi uh, significant now how to decide now there is a very simple formula how to decide compare compare the r square value of both the mod r square value i think you know that i am sure i do not think i, you, I am sure you know that this is the measure of goodness or you can say the coefficient of determination so you will be comparing for example i say that i let me see is there place okay so this is for example this is a model this was log linear and whatsoever r square is 0.80 in this model the the coefficients were according to the theory the sign of the coefficient and the other thing was that the, they were the significant the similar with the b and the r square was 0.70 i think you have guessed that you will be choosing a model because in both the models the uh, coefficients signs are according to the theories and the intercept or you can say the uh, the r square value is in one case it is higher in the other case is higher and the both the co uh, coefficients in both the models are statistically significant so definitely you will go for the 80% that explains your model 80% but there is some caution also that in comparing r square values the dependent variable or the regression of the two models is the same you can only compare two r square when you are using different two model that the regression that is the dependent variable that is the similar that they that is in the same shape so if the, if the shape of the that variable that is the dependent variable change you can't compare the r square for the comparison of the r square you should ensure that, that the dependent variable is in the situation that it is in the both cases the regressor can take any form do not worry about the independent variable they can take any of the form but if the uh, in what model the, the this is the uh, your dependent variable is the log form in the second it should also be in the log form so i would like to come uh, conclude at this stage here before concluding i would like to as usual i would like to give you the summary and what is the summary of today discussion we started f uh, from the features are the fundamental feature of the uh, scale and unit scale and units are important but be convenient and be relaxed that the practicality or you can say the meaning of the model remain the same but you will have to just go through some of the uh, interpretation change and you can do for this for example if you see that there is uh, one uh, uh, one model is uh, in one situation you if one researcher take the million the other takes the billion then definitely if he uh, implies the simple model he will be seeing that when the, the the person who is has taken in million he will be seeing that if there is 1 million change in the independent variable on average there is uh, according to the beta ch change in the dependent variable and definitely beta now we will be calling the beta million and the other one we will be calling billion for this now we went towards the standardized variable standardized variable are very important what is a standardized variable what is the logic between uh, behind this variable that sometime we uh, many of the variable come in different scales now scale doesn't mean that there is w1 they are multiplied with 100 or 2 their nature of scale is different for example if milk comes in liter in uh, vegetable comes in uh, uh, you can say the weight uh, the weight kilogram and you can say the petrol also come in liter and if you have something else that is, has some other scale so how to convert them to, to standardize because if we will be talking about different scale it will uh, make the situation ambiguous and we will be worried about this so we have some formula we will standardize these variable 
what is the standardized variable we can standardize any of the variable the formula for standardize of uh, of the variable is that we subtract the mean of the standardized variable now to whom we are going to standardize we st subtract the mean of the variable from its each value and we divide this difference by the standard as and deviation of the uh, that variable and this becomes the standardized variable standardized variable have two basic characteristic the first characteristic is that the mean of any of the standardized variable is always equal to zero and we proved it mathematically and i think uh, you may have got the idea of this the second property of this uh, standardized variable is that the variance of standardized variable is always equal to one so this standardized variables play an important role and there is a very interesting change in the standardization interpretation when you use the standardized uh, form of the variable now what will be you, you showing you will be uh, saying that if is your independent variable changes by one standard deviation on average your dependent variable will change according to the size of the beta and that will also be the standard deviation after this at the end of this lecture we talked about the functional form we are st still uh, uh, stick to the our assumption that the model should be linear in the parameter but there are different kind that that the model remain linear in the parameter but different scenario emerge and the first scenario is the model is double log model L uh, log of y depends on the log of x variable semi log reciprocal log and you so say the log of the reciprocal we will continue you the our discussion but the first problem emerges that how to make the choice between different competitors of the model the first thing is that that the your skill and the expertise plays a crucial and the important and the significant role in choosing the model particularly when the model is multiple regression model in simple regression model you plot the x and y uh, and see what is the situation whether they are linked in a linear way or they are uh, linked in non linear way you can use different techniques so however it is a totally ma uh, matter of you can say the skill and expertise we have some of the guidelines on which if we travel we follow those guidelines we may reach at the end of the this the first is we should know the theory very well if we know the theory very well theory can explain that which kind of model can be used for example if i say you should go to the phillips curve there is a inverse relationship between the employment and the inflation rate so this is the situation here the second was this that whatever you model use you should concentrate on that whether your uh, uh, the beta as the coefficient have the sign that is according to the theory if it is according to the theory then go to the next step and see whether these are significant if these are significant then there is uh, another scenario you can emerge that uh, is almost rarely that the both model are uh, in the both model the coefficient have the uh, sign according to the theory and they are also statistical significant then you are in a fix then you will be uh, running towards the coefficient of determination that is the r square it will tell you if it's have the higher value then definitely you will be preferring the high, higher value as compared to the other values so this is end of our today and we will continue our discussion from the next lecture so goodbye and allah hafiz